Hey guys, this is True Cubing. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one, we're going to teach you how to solve the 4x4 Rubik's Cube. Let's go ahead and scramble this cube up. The basic method of solving a 4x4 is to reduce it to a 3x3. So what we're going to try and do is to pair up these edges to make the, this edge on the 3x3, pair up the centers to make it a center on a 3x3, and then we'll have a 3x3 cube. So obviously the first step is now to solve the centers. So let's start with white. We're going to look for all the center pieces and you'll notice that they're in the inside of the cube, not on the outside. So here I can see one here and I can see another center here. So what we can do is we see that if we move this one up to the top layer, it will be in this position, which is over here. So what we need to do is move this edge over to this position with a U2 to be able to solve this edge like that and make a bar. Now we're gonna make another bar and then we'll solve that, the whole center. So here, our next two edges are here and here. Again, if I move this center up, it will place itself over here. So we've gotta move the center over here. So when, it, when we move the, this center up, it will match up. And now what we can do is do a U2 and now bring this bar up like this. Next step is to solve the opposite center. So on a three by three, since we've solved the white center first, we're gonna do the yellow center. So. Again, we can make a bar. And now we're going to have to be careful that we're not messing up this white center while we're making the yellow center. So whenever you do a slice move that disrupts the center, you're always going to be having to undo that move. So here we can make a bar by moving these by connecting these two. So we can do something like white L. And remember this one disrupts the center. But now to conserve this bar and bring this one back down, we can move it across to put it here and now get it out of this axis and move this one back down. Now we've made a bar here. Now we can go ahead and find our next bar. Here we already got our bar, but it would be the same concept. So now what we can do is solve these two bars on this opposite uh, layer to the white center. Now, if we try to do something like F2R, we actually disrupt this center, the white one. So what we have to do is align them on the same axis and then replace this one with the top one, move it across twice, and now we can bring this back down. And we've solved our two opposite centers. Now you can go ahead and do the same thing for the rest of the centers. It's the same concept. You make a bar, then another, and then you solve them. So here we can see we have a bar here on the left, and we can pair up these two to make the final bar. So what we can do is move it across, pair them up, move them across and bring them back down and you've made the center. Now this is the moment when you have to be very careful. You have to make sure that your centers are in the right position. So if we wanted to make this center next, we'd notice that we have our white center here, our green one here and our yellow one here. On a three by three, we have our white one here, green one there and yellow one there. So this center must be red. If you do the orange one, you're gonna have to undo it and it can take a bit more time. So what we can do is make a bar we've already got one here and now we can make our next one so we can see the two centers are here so when we move this one up it will connect with this edge this center here so we have to move this one across twice and then we can move it up and again we have to move it out of this axis because we just disrupted the the green center so we can do a u and then bring this back down to solve the green one and now we have our two bars again if you want to put this bar onto this layer, we have to put these two bars on the same axis, then replace it, move it across twice, and bring this back down. Now we've solved four centers. The last two centers, you may have to play around a bit. It can be a bit tricky. Here we got extremely lucky. Um, we just have two bars, and we want our blue one here, and our orange one here. Remember, if we have a three by three, the red center is here, the white one's here, the yellow one's here. So we're going to be in this position and this is going to be blue. So what we can do again, align these two bars on the same axis, move this up to replace it, move it across twice and bring this back down. It can be a bit more tricky, such as this case here, but the set concept is still the same. You make a bar so we can connect these two by moving this up, moving it across to get it off this layer and then bring this back down to resolve this one and the red one as well. And now we've got this bar. The next bar we can do, this is a common case you will get where there's two centers that need to be swapped. All you need to do is find a way for this lonely center here on this axis 
to match up with this lonely one here. And the way you can do that is by putting it over here, bringing this down, and now we're going to move this bar over to this axis, so that when we bring it back up, we'll be solving not only this one, but resolving the rest as well. Again, this wouldn't work if this center was over here, because when we bring this down, it's not going to match it up. The next step is now to solve all your edges. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to look for two edges that are the same. So here we can look for the blue and yellow edges. We can see one here and we can also see one here. So now to solve these two edges, we have to use outer moves that don't disrupt the centers to move them into the optimal position. And this optimal position is to have them diagonally across on the same middle layer. So it's going to look like this here. So these two edges are going to be paired up and it doesn't look like this where they're directly across. Now to get them into that position, we have to, yeah, again, use outer layers. So here we can move this one over to here by hiding it, moving the top layer across and bringing this back down. And now we have them diagonally across. So now what we can do is pair them up by slicing like this and then taking out this edge and putting it onto the top layer or the bottom layer with an R, U, R prime, and then slice back. Now you've solved this edge here. We have to do this for the rest of the edges around the cube. So here I can see this edge and this edge. They go together like this, so we can slice to pair them up. You can also slice this way, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, so they were already in the correct position. Now you have to be careful when you're taking out this edge that you replace it with an unsolved edge. So we could replace it with any of these edges around the cube. If we were in this position, however, and we decided to put this edge in here and then slice back, we would actually disrupt this one and break it up. So we have to always replace this edge with an unsolved one. For example, put this one in here, slice back. I can see these two, we can hide it, move this across and bring this back down. We can slice to pair them up and then insert an unsolved edge. So this one, for example. R, U prime, R prime, slice back. And now we have this case again, and now we can slice, insert an unsolved edge. So not this one, but this one would be good, like that, and slice back. Um, we actually got lucky again, we have these two. And now what we're gonna have to do is when we slice, we notice that there are no unsolved edges on the top. So we have to rotate twice, and then put the solved edges on the bottom, and now when we slice, we have lots and lots of free edges that we can insert into here. So we can use this one, for example, and slice back. Next one we can see is these two here. Um, you can actually use a flipping algorithm, which are going to come in handy later in the solve. But we can also just take this one out and then put it back in the right position. Moving this across and bringing this up to put them diagonally across. Now when we slice, look around the cube. There are only two free edges, but we can use one of them like this and slice back. Now when we look around the cube, we have three edges left. So we can move this one over to here, like something like this. And now again, if we slice, we notice there are no free edges around the top layer. So we have to rotate, look if there are any other good edges. Nope, none here. So now we have to move an unsolved edge, which is back here onto the top layer. So we can do something like L, U prime, L prime. And remember our two edges are here and now we've got our unsolved edge here. So now the way we can do this is slicing and then inserting this edge into here. Like this. Now you might get lucky and have all your edges solved or you will get this case when there are two unsolved edges. Now you're gonna need an algorithm for this. It's pretty simple. Um, but for this case, we're going to have them directly opposite, not looking like this. So when we have them directly opposite, after a bit of moving around, we use this algorithm. Y u prime, R u r prime, F r prime, F prime r, and then Y u, and that solves these two edges. Now that we've reduced it through to a three by three, you can see for yourself, it looks very similar. So now you need to know how to solve a 3x3. Three three. And if you don't know how to solve a 3x3, three three, check out our tutorial up here. So we do the same thing. We can build a cross if you're more advanced or a daisy if you're less advanced. 
Um, so we can do something like this to build our cross. This should all come naturally to you if you already know how to solve a 3x3. Three three. If you know the beginner method, you insert the corners and then the edges. Advanced solvers insert the edges and the corner of the second layer at the same time. So that's what I'm going to be doing now to go a bit faster. Like that. And our last stage. Now when you get to the last layer, you may have an impossible position on a 3x3. Three three. So on a 3x3, three three, you can never have three edges only oriented. You either have two, four, or zero. So this is when you're gonna need the parity algorithm. So parity on a four x four is when you get an impossible position on a three x three, but it is possible on a four x four. So the algorithm for OLL parity, when you're trying to create the yellow cross for your last layer, goes like this. YDAR, U2, rotate with an X, and then YDAR, U2, YDAR, U2, YDAR prime, U2, Wide L, U2, Wide R prime, U2, Wide R, U2, Wide R prime, U2, Wide R prime. And now you've got a possible position on a 3x3. So now you can orient your last layer. Again, you may get PLR parity on 4x4, which is an impossible position which you can't have on a 3x3. Now this one is a bit more difficult to recognize, but if you follow your beginner steps in solving the last layer, you'll realize that it's not gonna work. So here we we solve all the corners and now we try and solve the edges as well and now you may get this which is impossible to get on a 3x3. You can play around and see what you get but this will never occur on a 3x3. This is also the same thing, you can never get two edges directly swapped and again this is also impossible having two corners swapped. To deal with these cases we have to use this parity algorithm to be able to solve it. We slice twice in the middle right layer, U2, slice again wide u2 slice again and then wide u2 and you can end with a u2 and now this position is possible to solve on a 3x3 three three. now you go ahead and do your last layer algorithms and now we've solved your 4x4 four four. thanks for watching this tutorial we hope it helped if you have any questions or comments leave them down below like subscribe share and we'll see you guys in the next video